organization process of industrial work explain the meaning of organization describe various classification and model of organization examine the process analyze organizational process explain study work process behavior process and change process in modern industrial society we often come across words like organization and process we come across an organization in every walk of life these organizations mold individuality limit actions and at times develop procedures and work to attain set goals if we carefully study the word we may realize that we interact with the organization in everyday life almost every time organizations import knowledge we work under organization we are administered in day to day life by a certain organization and continuously we are connected to one organization or other similarly everything we do needs to follow a process or we can say the process is intrinsic in work of every organization we do not find every event occurring to happen in a haphazard manner it is because the chaos is minimized by following a set procedure or process while we are dealing with an organization or working under it there will always be a due course of action in the most layman term that due course of action can be termed as the process though there are excellent studies that have been done on this concept thus if we wish to understand the organizational process we will first have to study both the concept organization and process separately in our discussion we will begin with an analysis of organization and various studies that have been done to understand it then we will proceed to explain the meaning of process and finally analyze the whole organizational process that governs the workflow in an industry organization organization has been studied in famous depth by many researchers and discussed vividly in the past decade the major concern regarding the study of organization has revolved around its relation with society and individual scholars have also tried to point out its characteristics and sketch its components by this they thought a better understanding of organization would have been possible however the research available on the subject still needs more consistency yet it has been seen that organizational studies usually center on few basic questions such as what is the scope of organization what are its chief characteristics how do organization work what could be its meaning how can the organization be related to society and individual etc the studies have tried to answer these fundamental questions regarding the organization in their analysis it was already known that organization formed the chief feature of urban society especially industrial society however sociologists felt the need to identify the more distinct and characteristics of organization as the word suggested in relation to industries and firms so it could be said that there existed a social organization with its broader set of relationship and interaction among masses of which many individual organization formed a part now it was on the scholars to develop studies which could differentiate organizations in its macro as well as micro level based on their structure characteristics scope goal and work thus talcott parsons in 1960 suggested that there existed four types of organization depending on their contribution to society 
first being production organization second were those which pursued political goals third were integrative organization which acted as a motivator and reduced conflicts and finally the patron maintenance organization which took care of education and culture scholars like azioni blaw and scott came up with yet another classification that was based on compliance relationship the study examined the relationship that existed between the authority and the members involved with the organization they suggested that coercive means alternative involvement such as prison whereas remunerative means produced calculative involvement as seen in firms normative means create moral involvement as seen in a voluntary organization the scholars pointed out that there will always be a correspondence between the authority and the form of participation from members related to an organization similarly blaw and scott tried to classify organization from the point of view of who benefits they tried to categorize different organization on the basis of which segment of society consumes the output generated by the organization thus they claimed mutual benefit organizations were those in which the members themselves benefited from the output the second types of organizations were the profit generating ones which could be termed as business enterprises the third called service organizations benefited the clients finally the last was called as commonwealth organizations in which public were the principal beneficiaries there are many scholars who have examined the structure along with the goal of the organization to have a better understanding it was felt that the purpose of organization gave rise to an inherent structure as well without understanding the structure a proper comprehension of organization was not possible thus keeping such concern in mind the scholars developed the structuralist system approach for studying organization the structuralist system approach the structuralist system approach had many researchers like blaw and scott and later on zioni to adopt the structuralist system approach they did this by categorizing the organization as formal and complex according to zioni organizations were social units which had goals and were deliberately constructed and reconstructed to seek those goals it was also explained that organizations also demonstrated division of labor which was rather planned unlike society where it is random organization had power and communication responsibilities along with standardized and recurrent behavior many studies were also made to understand organization better challenged the word system that was associated with organization earlier few writers extended the thought that organizations are marked with characteristics like control power and conflict some of the thoughts by earlier writers were supported by salaman and thompson in their work people and organizations to this ezioni added that the presence of conflict necessitated the existence of power centers and transfer of personnel many of the studies which were made also resulted in blaw and scott to review the meaning of organization and explain it as a collectivity with relatively identifiable boundary a normative order authority ranks communication systems and membership coordinating system blaw and scott also explained that all the components continuously existed on a collective basis and work to achieve a set goal finally it was concluded that organizations were coherently designed goal seeking entities 
However, such definitions were also deemed incomplete as they did not explain the interactive part or an empirical explanation for the structure and the process was given. Suggestions were also made that the organization had to be seen as a power structure instead of system with balanced goals and needs. Again it was felt that behavior of people within the organization which formed part of the interaction process had to study without which definition of the organization will remain incomplete. Hall pointed out that not all behaviors within the organization are organizationally based. Later, McKinley suggested that any explanation of the organization had to take into account how well people are processed by the organization and how people reciprocate to such influence of the same. Finally, it was recognized that the organization was a too complex phenomenon to be understood only on the basis of its definition. A classification of some model that encompassed its varied dimension was required. A single term or criterion was inadequate in defining the real purpose of the organization. So it was acknowledged that an adequate classification would require encompassing array of external conditions, the total spectrum of actions and interaction within an organization and the outcome of organizational behavior. It has taken into account how other disciplines of social science define organization, its scope and characteristic for better understanding. All these disciplines have developed a model of organization. In 1971, Pooh had identified six models. We will underline those models and try to understand them in next subtopic. Models and classifications. As mentioned above, essentially six models have been identified which falls under each discipline. To understand the organization better analysis of these six models is extremely valuable. So let's take a look at them. Economic theory. Under this theory, organization is termed as a firm. It acts in a coherent or rational manner to seek the goals that are set by it. Its goal being the maximization of profit and the least amount of loss. This theory looks at the man as a consumer motivated by wants and rational aims. Firm plays an essential part in the economic process based on which simulation models are developed to understand the firm better. Technology theory. This theory is the second important analysis of the firm after economic theory. This theory proclaims that technology is the most powerful component in an organization. It is the technology that molds the milieu of an organization and impacts its internal structure. The works of Woodward, Thompson, Perrow and Trist which was done during 1960s and 1970s falls under this category. Individual theory. This theory takes into account the human factor within the organization, how the attitude, personality attributes, behavior of individuals affect the environment of an organization. Management theory. The management theory dwells in maximizing productivity. The theory accepted the hierarchical authority being a usual part of an organization. It treats people as that component part of organization which could be made efficient and productive just like machines. The theory laid stress on the common sense of the management and propagated this maxim as a scientific statement. This theory found the base in the work of Fayol and Urwick during 1949 and 1956 respectively. Process and its definition. Process can be defined as a collection of tasks that involve transforming input into output which may consist of material, information and people. Customer service 
order fulfillment and new product development can be cited as an example of the process. Resource allocation and decision making also fall under the process. There have been a lot of studies on the process. Studies on process have also been made under organization theory, group dynamic and various management studies along with managerial behavior. It is thus understood that scholars have made a lot of effort to explain organizational process primarily because the study of process provides an intermediate level of analysis. As processes consists of diverse and interlinked tasks, they give us an opportunity to study organization on various levels, be it on departmental, hierarchical or managerial level. While studying the process, when we combine the individual task along with the organization as a whole, we find an integrated perspective regarding organizational process by integrating the work practices with the overall functioning of an organization, we are able to understand the whole concept far better. A study from the perspective of the process also helps us to get an enhanced idea about managerial or group behavior within the organization. Unlike other theories which have studied organization in fragments concentrating on certain variable, process theory integrates all the variables. Under process theory, we are able to study the links between various tasks performed under an organization. Organizational process. There are three basic approaches to organizational process and these are work process, behavioral process and change process. Each process is further subdivided into various other processes. For our better understanding, let's discuss all the process to understand the organizational process better. Work processes. The work processes approach is based on a simple understanding that every organization achieves their set a goal through connected chain of activities which encompass various departments and functional groups. This approach studies the accomplishing tasks of the organizations. These connected activities are known as processes. The process under this approach has been further categorized into operational process and administrative process. The process that creates, produce and deliver product and services to the customer is called operational process. While the process that is not involved in production of output but yet necessitates the running of business falls under administrative process. Product development, manufacturing and distribution are examples of operational process. Similarly, planning and budgeting will be the example of the administrative process. Operational process and administrative process are on many grounds similar to each other. Both include series of connected and interdependent activities which jointly transforms input into output. However, operational processes produce goods and services that consumers want as output. But administrative processes generate information and plans as output for the functional group working within the organization. To generate output adequately, every firm or organization needs the support of administrative processes. Thus, though these two processes usually functions in an independent and unrelated manner, but frequently they need to align their goal for effective functioning of the organization. Decision making processes. The study of decision making process can be found in the research of Chester Barnard and Herbert Simon. Thus, from the very beginning, the scholars have accepted that organizational decision making was a disseminated activity occurring over time and involving lot many people. 
these early studies of decision making gave rise to many more studies on the same topic there were scholars who focused their study on the basic decision making processes their goal was to explain decision making empirically with the help of flow charts and timelines which could highlight the orderly steps within decision making process this was done to see what stages encompass decision making process and whether they were overlapping followed logically or varied over time however from all the studies it has been proved that decision making processes are lengthy complex and slow they involve multiple stages and engage lot many people also have stages which may at times overlap these decisions may also suffer from prejudice of people involved in decision making and are at times molded by administrative structural and strategic background criterion such as how fast decision is made flexibility of outcome and logical consistency can help judging their effectiveness communication process the communication process can be named as behavioral process which had been studied from the times of hawthorne experiments by sociologists and social psychologists this process comprises many process of interactions face to face interaction within the group and intergroup relationships the effective workflow within an organization undoubtedly depends on the interpersonal relation and the communication carried out between them how individuals and functional groups share information on shared collective goal and what conflict arises in the procedure is part of study under this concept like behavioral process even this process is unpredictable and seldom similar in two different cases these processes are carried out almost every day and are not apparently visible on the surface similar to decision making process even communication processes are the result of subconscious hypothesis and are only identified after repeated observation due to their subtle nature organizational learning processes the organizational learning processes involves the creation and acquisition of new knowledge for the organizational health and survival this process has been that's why studied by scholars from different approaches within sociology like social psychologist organizational theorist and system thinkers the process is known to play a vital role in the development of mental models this process can be further be classified into knowledge acquisition interpretation dissemination and retention these approaches were evolved on the basis of organizations approach towards learning the four broad approaches were not used collectively by organization but according to its need and culture organization would rely on one or more approach like decision making process and communication process in an organization even learning process is disseminated among different departments and occupies a long time frame like the other two processes this process is also an organization process and can be categorized into different modes change process change process explains how an organization adapts develop and grow it takes into account series of the process that lead to the change change process is highly dynamic in comparison to work and behavioral process which were static in nature we can find three most prominent characteristic within the change process these are a set of starting conditions a functional end point and an emergent process of change change process highlights four distinct stages in an organization and that are creation growth transformation and decline and each stage represent a critical stage in an organization's life cycle 
Again, this process has been broadly divided into two categories, induced and autonomous. The induced process need external mechanism or external push which lead to the creation of the organization or changes in an organization. All planned change activities fall under this category. Induced change process is again divided into three basic stages. First period comprise of questioning and assessment of the stage occurs after which energy is focused to materialize the accepted pattern. Second is the stage of flux where we see a conflict between old accepted norms or procedure and new approaches. The third is seen as a period of consolidation when new approaches are institutionalized. Unlike induced change, the autonomous change occurs on its own without the help of external force. Under this change, internal dynamics are at play. Here, the organization evolves naturally and in some cases, the sequence of change in unavoidable. At times, the transition may create chaotic stages which led to the evolution of the organization in multiple unexpected ways. A smooth transition will result in organization's evolution from informal startup to more professionally managed institution. However, chaotic change results in organizational shifts which lead to rift in managerial and workers level. To understand organizational process, we have tried to examine the organization first and realized that an organization can be classified on the basis of work, goal and customer they satisfy. We can also say that there are various approaches which have been trying to explain the organization from time to time. So an interdisciplinary approach to understand organization is required. Finally, we went to understand the meaning of process and studies that process encompassed series of interlinked activities. Thus, it can be said that organizational process of industrial work is the sequential arrangement of various stages of work to meet the goal set by an organization. Before we end this discussion, we must accept that various approaches examined in this discussion are interlinked and yet represent different organizational phenomena. Similarly, by studying the organizational process, we are able to understand organizational activity in a better sense than any other manner.